All right, so we've covered the fact that there is two different types of calculus that we're going to focus on, uh, differential calculus and integral calculus. So for section 1.1, one, one, we're kind of going to explore um, what each one is. So the first one, I'm going to, there's eight problems on your homework, and I'm going to divvy these up. And so uh, some of the videos are going to deal with differential calculus, and some of them will deal with integral calculus. Um, so it's not going to be in order is what I'm trying to tell you. But bottom line is when we are dealing with differential calculus, what you're working with is called instantaneous rate of change, which we already went over. And so if you remember, um, your slope formula is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And remember that that requires two points. You have two points on a line, which would be x1, y1, and x2, y2. So if I've got two points on a line, I can determine the slope, which is how the line moves. Now, what's the issue? The issue is if I want instantaneous rate of change, that means I want to know what is happening at a singular point or at a moment in time, if you want to think about it that way, which means I can't have two points. I can only have one point. So if we start using the same point, well, then you're going to get zero over zero for your slope. So that's the issue. So again, we're just exploring right now. So we want to look at question number one. It says, find the distance traveled in 22 seconds by an object traveling at a constant velocity of 24 feet per second. Decide whether it can be solved using pre-calculus or whether calculus is required. So in this context, pre-calculus is not the course. Okay, it's, it's not you know, math 2412 or whatever it was. What this is, is anything before calculus. So your question is, do I know how to solve this yet? So if I know that distance equals rate times time, okay? So I know that distance equals rate times time. Well, then it says, find the distance traveled in 22 seconds. There's your time. Uh, traveling at a constant... So you'll notice constant there. So that reflects back to the intro video that I did. Um, constant velocity of 24 feet per second. Okay, so since it's a constant velocity, that means it is unchanging. So I've got distance equals 24 feet per second. That's your rate. And then your time is in 22 seconds. So what have you got for that answer? I don't know because I lost my calculator. Um, you're going to find out pretty quick. I don't do basic math in my head because I was screwed up. All right, so 24 times 22 is, and I get 528. So the distance traveled is 528 feet. So did we use calculus? No, no, this is an algebra concept that we learned back in middle school, probably. So your answer is I can use pre-calculus or anything before. And then um, your answer is just using algebra at 528 feet. So look at number two. What do we have for number two? A bicyclist is riding on a path modeled by this function right here, which is this graph, okay, where x and f of x are both measured in miles. Okay, find the rate of change or find the slope, okay, of elevation at a singular moment in time. I'm so sorry. Find it at a singular moment in time. And <laughs> I'm turning off my cell phone. All right. So since it's a singular moment in time, I don't know how to do this without using calculus. And I don't know calculus yet because today's day one. So what does this mean? Well, if you don't know what to do, do something that you do know how to do. So first of all, recognize that this little arrow is just pointing at the graph. Okay. I want to know, um, find the rate of change of elevation when X is exactly one. So here's a concept that you're going to need to familiar, familiarize yourself with. Okay, a tangent line shares one point with a curve. Okay, so I just drew the tangent line. So if I find the slope of the tangent line, I will by default know what the instantaneous rate of change of the single point is because I cannot make this line steeper or flatter without incorporating additional points on the curve. There's only a single tangent line with a unique slope that hits this singular point. Okay, so my little cheat is going to be if I can find the slope of this tangent line, then by default, I'll know the slope or the instantaneous rate of change 
of this singular point on the curve. Okay, so I don't know how to do this because I still don't know calculus. So what I am going to do is I'm going to approximate. So WebAssign is going to be very, very, very kind to you. And uh, they know that you're estimating. So you don't have to be, you know, dead on perfect. But what you do have to do is, is use um, common sense. If I want to find the slope at x equals 1, my best choice is going to be to grab points on either side of x equals 1 that are really heifer close to x equals 1. So I'm not going to use negative 10 and positive 10 because those aren't close to 1 and my target is 1. So I'm going to use an x value of 0 0.9, which is a tenth to the left, and an x value of 1.1, which is a tenth to the right. Okay, and what I can do is, again, this is an estimation, is I can find the two corresponding y values, and they'll be awfully close to my target, but it's not going to be the right answer. It's just going to be a good estimation. All right, so now what I've done is I've taken this out of calculus world, and I'm doing an estimation in algebra world. So what do we need? I need a y1 and a y2. So you're going to find out that I use my table a whole lot, in this class, if I, if I need to find, uh, using a formula, if I need to find multiple uh, answers for different x's, then just put it in the table. So go to y equals, and I've got 0 0.04 times 10x minus x squared. Okay, and now when I go to my table, so if you haven't done this, you're going to go to table set. Okay, so second window will take you to table set. And then you always want to put your independent to ask. So take your independent and go down here to ask. And what that's going to do is instead of populating the table by itself, you're going to tell it what to use. So now do second graph, which will take you to the table. And then what X values do I want? Well, I just said I want 0 0.9. So hit enter and it's going to figure it out for you. And then do 1.1 and hit enter and it's going to figure it out for you. And so that's just a quick, you can still do it from the home screen if you want to do each one by hand. It's just a little bit quicker and you're going to end up liking this later on. All right, so I've got uh, 3276. So 3276 and then I've got 3916. So 3916. Now, I just want the slope from that. So what is my slope? My slope is going to be Y2, which is 3916 minus Y1, which is 3276 over x2, which is 1.1, minus x1, which is 0 0.9. So when I do this in the calculator, I get 3916 minus 3276, and that is over, and then 1.1 minus 0.9. You should be able to do it in your head, but like I said, I'm not. All right, so I've got 0.32. So your estimate is I needed to use calculus to do this thing, but what I did was a pretty good approximation, and so my rate of change is going to be estimated at 0.32, okay? So again, that's the slope of this line, which is a secant line. A secant line shares two points. My target is to get the tangent line, which shares one point, okay? But I used pre-calculus to estimate this. Now, what could you have done to get a better approximation? Because I used 0.9 and I used 1.1 you could have gotten even closer. So I could have used 0.99 and then 1.01. Okay, I could have done that. I could have gotten even closer and done 0.999 and 1.001. And so you can get really heifer close, but until you know calculus, you can't get it exactly on the dot. Okay, and again, WebAssign is going to be friendly because it knows you're estimating. So let's do it again. We have... All right, so a bicyclist, it's not the same guy, is riding on a path modeled by the function f of x equals 0 0.09x, where x and f of x are measured in miles. So find the rate of change of elevation at exactly x equals 2. So I want x equals 2. I want how is that uh, rate of change being affected at a single moment in time. So you need to remember also that Algebra doesn't cease to existing just because you're in calculus. So what do you have? What is this a picture of? 
it is a straight line. Remember, in math, all lines are straight, okay? Curves are not straight. So this is a line, which means this is of the formula or of the format y equals mx plus b. So you actually know your instantaneous rate of change because it's sitting right smack in front of you. So was I able to use precal? Yes, yeah, simply because this is kind of a bridge between algebra and calculus. A straight line will have the same instantaneous rate of change in algebra as it does in calculus. Okay, so I use precal to solve this thing because my slope is screaming at me and it is 0 0.09. So I did not have to use any tricks or anything simply because I acknowledge the fact that that's a y equals mx plus b. Now, if you had used other points, because again, my target was 2, so if I had used 1.9 and 2.1 and then gone in and gotten my, um, my y values, so clear this out, hang on, what is my 0.09x, and then we're going to go to table, and I used 1.9 and I used 2.1, Okay, so when I go out, I have 1.9 gave me a 171. And then I have a 2.1 gave me a 189. Well, if I put this into my slope formula, so I've got y2 minus y1 over x2, oops, minus x1. Holy cow. All right, so what does that give me? So go out here, I've got 0 0.189 minus... 0 0.171 over 2.1 minus 1.9. And what do I get? I get 0 0.09, which is the slope that I already found. So I just wasted my time by not remembering that I was in algebra world already. Okay, so either way, your answer is 0 0.09. All right, so we're going to skip this one because I'm going to do it on video number two. And then we have this one, which is going to be, I don't know if I can fit both of these in. Hang on, I'm looking. All right. I have three minutes. All right, I'm going to stop this one and then we'll do the next two. So this is this section one of chapter one is going to be a little bit longer just because there's so many intro concepts, but I'm going to go ahead and get this one started for you. Um, I don't even know what I just did. I'm going to stop this one so that I can do the last two problems and then we'll go into the other side.